Hi, this is Paul from Umbrella Space, and in this video, we're going to show you how to work with image transparency and also achieve some animated background effects. So, the image you're looking at in front of you at the moment, um, if we hover the mouse over the background, we will see that the clouds animate from right to left, and if we take the mouse away from the image area, it then animates in the other direction. So what we have here is two images. We have the image of the tower in the front, and then we have the image of the clouds in the background. So we'll show you how we, we achieve this effect. Um, but first we'll switch over to Photoshop and just have a look at how we prepared some of these images. So we have essentially two images that we started with, which was this particular image here with the tower, and then the cloud image. Before we go any further, I'll just say that this isn't going to be a how-to tutorial on using Photoshop. We're purely going to focus on the element side of things. So um, it is presumed that you will already know how to cut your image out so that it's separated from the background. Um, the end result is this. So we have this tower which is set against a transparent background, which is the checkered effect there. Um, you'll notice also with this image that we've um, flipped the tower so that it's facing in the opposite direction. And we've got this sitting on the far left side. And we've also expanded the canvas size so that the ratio of the image is a little bit more like a desktop ratio. This is necessary for it to sit in the background and to give us a little bit more control over the size of it on various devices. With the cloud image, the cloud image was originally a little bit larger, but we've actually cropped it down so that it is wider than it is higher. Um, this is necessary because when it's sitting in the background, we need some of the image to actually be off the screen so that it can animate from left to right or from right to left. Um, if the image was just filling the screen, it wouldn't have anywhere to animate, so it needs to be larger than the screen. So what's happening is when we're on the web page, this image will actually completely fill the screen. Um, and because most screens are generally wider than they are higher, it will mean that it will attempt to fill the height of the screen. And to do that, it's going to have to have some of the image disappearing off to the side. So you'll see when we actually start animating um, how that impacts on the effect that we're trying to achieve. With saving these images, we need to make sure, as with any image, that it's optimized for web. So the cloud image is pretty straightforward. That just needs to be saved as a JPEG. But with the tower image, this needs to be saved as a PNG, because PNGs are the image format that contains transparency. So if we go with, if we go into Photoshop and export this out for web. And we'll just zoom out a bit. Okay, so we've got this set up as PNG24. So quickly looking at the other options. JPEG doesn't work because we can't use transparency. That would just come out with a white background. PNG8 does support transparency, but you can see because of the low number of colors that a PNG has, it can only have up to 256 colors. There's not enough subtlety there for it to create the transparent effect that we want. So PNG24 is the one that gives us the best overall effect, but there is going to be a cost, and that is that the file size is going to be quite large. So before we export it out, let's just resize this a bit. The original I'm working with is quite large. I'm going to use the height as the um, guiding measurement for how big I want the dimensions to be. We'll set this to 750 so that when the image is exported out, it doesn't completely fill the full height of the screen. On a desktop, this means that it will sit at roughly three quarters of the height of a screen. On a tablet and phone, we'll just switch over and have a little bit of a preview and see how this works. So this is the desktop. So 
that's with roughly about 750 height. It's it's expanding up to fill the space that is available to it. If I switch over to iPad preview, we'll see that it's much, much smaller, but that's okay because with this particular example, we want to allow space for the text to appear. And likewise on phone, it's even smaller again, but that again leaves us space for working with text. So by using this particular image size for this tower to fill three quarters of the height of the screen on desktop and then reduce down to much smaller sizes on tablet and phone. So once we've set the image dimensions as we want, we can hit save and that will save a copy of the image. I've already got one saved, so you'll see the full sized image is here. The version I saved is 485K. Now that's a bit too big for a website. Um, so we do need to compress the image. So we need to put it into something like tiny PNG. So we'll just need to select that image. Just by clicking there and putting it in and it'll start compressing. And you can see here that it's compressed down from 484K down to just over 100K, giving us nearly 80% of um, compression. And there'll be no visible difference with that in terms of how the image appears. So that's an awesome bit of compression and a much necessary step. Okay, so we now have our images ready to start working with. So we will switch over to Elementor and we will begin working now i've already uploaded these images so i won't need to go through that step but you will need to just make sure that you upload the images to elementor so you need to upload your optimized transparent image and your background image so with elementor we'll just add a new section just a single column and we will click on the section tab and we'll just set up some of our layout settings. So we want to use the full width of the screen. We want to get rid of any columns gaps. We'll start with fitting this to the height of the screen and the other settings we can probably leave. Next we move over to background and we want to set up the classic background type so that we can just drop in an image and from our media library we will select the image that we want to put in um, this one is one that I prepared earlier so it's not quite the same dimensions it's a little bit larger than the uh, image that we saw in Photoshop but it's essentially going to achieve the same thing so we'll insert that image into our page and you can see we've got a bit of a repeat happening here so we need to set it to have no repeats we'll just position it in the center to start with and we'll give it a scrolling attachment making it scroll when we scroll the page and the last one we want to do is cover set the size to cover so that it completely fills the section that we're working with and this is going back to what I was talking about with the image ratio you can see now that because it's had to expand the height of the image to fill this section part of our image is disappearing off to the right and to the left of the screen because we have this set as the center if I move this to the center left there's the part of the image that was off to the left and if I move it to the center right you can see this is the part of the image that's disappeared off to the right so putting it back in the center we can see that those both left and right areas um, are disappearing off the screen so we've got our background image set up with the clouds so now we need to put the tower image in and we're actually using background overlay to achieve this effect so again we'll just go onto background overlay We'll select the classic background type and we'll choose an image and we'll drop that in. Again, we need to just set this up with its positioning. So bottom left for the position, uh, we want to scroll with the page. We don't want it to repeat. And we will set the 
image size to contain because if we set it to cover it's a little bit too big contain drops it down a bit so that it's not dominating the area too much finally by default background overlay is set to 50 percent opacity so we need to just push that all the way up to one so that the image is fully visible so there we have our transparent image now which is the tower sitting over a background image now to achieve the animated effect we'll go back to the background and this time we're going to click on the hover state so the hover state is the state that um, the background image is in when the mouse is hovering over the background so if we click again on to a background image and we're going to select exactly the same image that we were just working with before so that both in the normal state and the background state we've actually got identical images we'll just set that up set this image up so that it has the same properties initially as the normal state I know we had this at cover okay now when we hover over we're not getting anything happen that's because the settings are identical so if we switch over to normal essentially what's happening between the normal what's going to happen between normal and hover state is that it's going to transition between the two states so for that to have any visible effect we need to set something as being different from one state to the other and to do what we'll do is we'll actually put the positioning as the center left on the normal state and as center right on the hover state and when we scroll over the image you can see now it switches between those two states now that's quite a fast transition which may be what you want for the particular kind of effect that you're after but we need to make this slower so we can push that transition up to three so we get a smoother transition between those two but that's still too fast so we'll make this actually about 20 you just have to type the value in and then we get a nice slow effect of the cloud maybe even a little bit slower again 25 as it transitions from one state to the next giving us the effect of the clouds floating behind the tower okay so once you hit update you'll have that saved and there's your animated background behind a transparent image a few other things you can try is with the background attachment at the moment it's scrolling so if you want to have the effect where the image is fixed the background image is fixed we just need to change that to fixed on both the normal and hover state and you'll get that now animated where the tower scrolls with the page but the cloud stays with the background just note little um, bit of information there it says attached attachment fix works only on desktop that's true so what happens is when you're on iPad or tablet you'll see that it actually reverts back to the scroll state of the image okay back on desktop something else you might want to try is rather than having the section complete be the full height of the screen we can actually just return this to the default height and we'll see by doing so it's now become very very small uh, we need to just add a little bit of content so if we actually save this and viewed it on the website you wouldn't see anything at all because when you are using a section that has no column gaps and just a default height you're actually telling it to have no height at all so we need to put some content in and we'll just drop a heading in and I'll just go my animated page and we'll just give center that text and just put a little bit of styling we'll give it text a color that we can see visibly and We'll set the font size something reasonably large and still it's only going to be taking up a very small amount of space so we'll use padding as a way of adding some extra height to this particular element so 400 pixels above and below um, I'd obviously need to go and 
set this also for tablet and mobile to make sure that it's looking fine on each of those devices but we'll just stick with desktop for the moment so you can see now by using padding and some content we again have the animated effect occurring in the background um, you can use you can just adjust the padding to set this to be the height that you want we can also use instead of height minimum height and you can use that to control the height as well and you'll see with minimum height because we've got the padding sitting inside there it won't allow us to go below a certain value okay so that's it for this particular tutorial uh, we hope you got something out of it and we hope you can create some awesome animated background effects see you next time